Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And I gotta say, as I look out from my top balcony, past my lower balcony, toward this new encroaching home, built by Vintage Beef, it turns out, after all, which looks beautiful, don't want to spoil anything. Big fan of how that's coming along, though, VB. You keep at it. I look back here, though, and I think, I don't have a unity of design here. I've got fences that I use as windows along the uh, right side of the house being used as fences over here. And then I got blocks I use as fences not being used properly. If we teleport this way, I, I like that you can see the crops over here, but then this just has these fences. There's got to be a better way. So I realized what I don't have is if I'm going to have a farm up here, like a wheat farm, maybe over here, what I actually should do is set up a non-wheat farm. And I'm like, okay, so if we're going to think about it, this is the portal room area, so that's like nethery stuff. We're going to need to uh, hew out a little bit of this now that we've got those fences out there. But, um, okay, so nether area, nether portal, we've got, we've got wheat in this elevated position, but here we've got this lower position. I think... Whoa, whoops. Those are the pumpkins I put in to light this up at night. I think that I need to um, have some nether crops in here. So, unfortunately, the shader pack uh, puts blue sky in the nether. That's the only complaint I have. Luckily, you might be wondering, Joe, how far do you have to walk to get to soul sand? Well, there is a ton of soul sand down here. Like, this is like soul sand topia. I could probably dig soul sand until I hit, like, lava. Do I want to dig soul sand until I hit lava? No. I also don't want to spend all day eating a single piece of steak. What's going on there? Come on. Server, come on, behave. Okay, so we're just going to grab enough soul sand without actually, hopefully, digging through the lava. Ooh. Looks like I kind of hit one of those blocks that didn't quite despawn there. Dang it, another one. It's like walking through an invisible maze trying to get soul sand, you know? Okay. On the whole, though, that is now stack and almost a half. Boom. Precisely a half of soul sand. So, we are just going to teleport back up here, and then we're going to teleport back this way, and hopefully we're not going to actually hit the portal, because that would teleport me way into the distance, which we know now works for sure. But, okay. I should probably have planted some nether wart down there in that hole, now that I'm thinking about it, because I've got all this soul sand in an area right... Oh. Okay, so immediate problems with this plan are beginning to present themselves. Uh, one, there's a hole here. <laughs> we're we're gonna have to gonna have to resolve that. Two, I'm actually thinking maybe I want to go ahead and leave an area in front of the portal that's still like not a farm, you know, just so that you can come out of the portal and not be immediately, I don't know, encumbered with slowness. Another thing is, I remember like when I look up here, we've got this strap kind of continuing out part way. So I think I should probably try to extend this kind of a bit here, although maybe not. I don't know exactly how I'm going to want to play with this or play this, but I need to have this go down at least that far so stuff doesn't climb up. And then if, uh, let's see, those are orange hardened clay, which I don't have on me, so that's fine. So one thing I want, wow, this pick hex with the haste, it's way too fast. Like unacceptable quantities of pickaxe speed is the quality of this pickaxe. Okay. I'm also not sure what I'm going to do with these lights here. I'm thinking maybe I put brown glass there, but it, it could it could go either way. I decided to run inside real quick to hopefully make some brown glass. Ooh, I might not have cocoa beans for that. Well, well, we'll come back to that in a minute. What I was thinking about this morning, though, was... Uh, now, bear with me. This is completely spoiler-free. I don't think it makes a lot of sense that Harry Potter actually decided to grow up and become an Auror. And I got a few reasons for that, okay? Like, I get the idea that, like, okay, I want to be a cop. That's that's cool. All, all children want to be policemen. But you know what? He went to Hogwarts in the generation that had more practical, hands-on defense against the dark arts training than, like, any other generation. Like, I feel like, okay, yeah, you want to help people. That's nice. But anybody at this point who is in his year at Hogwarts can be a wizard cop to some degree. Like, you don't need a ton of, like... Like, they have better training in Dumbledore's army than probably the Wizard Police Academy. Like, I'm just saying. And, 
So, you know what I was thinking? Like, well, where could Harry Potter really make the biggest difference? And, and where would he actually logically end up? Because this was, this was just on my mind, bugging me all morning. And I think that the answer is the Department of Magical Child Services. Because, you know, you got to keep in mind that in the context of the Harry Potter universe, the Department of, like, Magical Child Services dropped him off when he was an infant with some blood relatives and then ignored him for, like, eight years. And, uh, okay, so it's two guys' side job. It's, it's not even, like, their full-time thing. They take a baby whose sole reason for being alive is, like, parents who care about him, and then they leave him with people whose, like, idea of a parenting book is, like, ripping a bunch of pages out of the beginning of rolled doll books and, like, getting a three-hole punch and then three-hole punching them and putting them in a binder. Like, that just really, oh, that's, that door's not going to open. That just really, to me, does not strike me as, like, a good governmental department. Like, there's a lot of problems with a lot of different ministries inside of, like, the Ministry of Magic. But, like, the, the, the wizard police is not the one that needs the help here, you know? And I, I, I think, like, okay, so if Harry really wants to help people, like, his parents were killed, and he's like, well, I want to go be a wizard policeman so that my parents don't be the only parents to die. No, I mean the opposite of that. I want other people to not have parents be killed. That, that would be really cool, you know, because being an orphan is, is no fun or what have you. Like, that's fine. He, he, he goes into goes into wizard school, uh, goes into wizard policeman right after school. Okay, whatever. Wizard Police Academy after all of his defense art against the dark arts training. Fine. Fine. Okay. I get it. But, like, I can't imagine that, like, the first time that, like, he has, like, a toddler whose parents were killed or injured or something, and he's got to take the child and drop it off at the Department of, like, Magical Child Services, that he, like, goes into that room and he sees that it's a tiny closet office under some stairs with, like, some old expired candy and, uh, you know, maybe there's, like, some an extra set of, like, huge motorcycle keys or something. Like, I don't think Harry Potter is just going to look at that and, like, transform, like, or not transform, what do they call it? It's like when they uh, sh transfigure. He's not just going to transfigure into a little dog with a little hat and sip his coffee and sit down and say, this is fine, while, like, that magical toddler or whatever says, you know, this is really Casey Green's joke and then sets the whole room aflame. Like, that's not going to be something that happens. Like, I think that Harry Potter is going to see a situation like that and say, no, I'm not a hero who like, just lets the same things happen over and over. Like, that's his whole thing, is he's supposed to be breaking these cycles, right? He's breaking this cycle of control that Voldemort had and all this other stuff. But, like, if you have this entrenched part of the bureaucracy that is just completely ruined, like, and, and no one else really cares about it, like, that's where you need somebody who not only, like, deeply cares, which Harry would, but also could be a big fundraiser. Because, I mean, he, he you got to keep in mind, like, he's got that Harry Potter name, he's got that Harry Potter scar. Like, a lot of people might think, oh, Harry Potter running around beating up people just because they were once confronted by the Dark Lord. He's what a bully, you know. He's so self-serving. He's always trying to, he's out for himself. But, like, putting him in charge of, like, child services, that seems like something where everybody would go, yeah, no, he's an okay guy. He means well. Um... Let's see, here's what we need. Boom. So then we can take, I've got finally enough brown uh, dye that we can take this and we can turn this into some glass. But like, okay, sorry, I, I get easily distracted because I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to express that I feel very deeply about Harry Potter's job as an adult and that I feel very deeply about finishing my balcony. So, okay. So, you know, he, he's, he's supposed to be this whole hero guy. And I just, I, it doesn't seem plausible to me that he would let this all end, end right there. I have no, it's just so dark, I don't know where I'm going now. Like, you know, he's just, I, I guess what it, what it comes down to for me is I feel like he knows that his parents were killed because bad people acted and good people, like, failed to stop them. But there's a lot of people who now have the training to attempt to stop bad people, who might not have, like, you know, 15, 18, 20 years ago. Whereas, like, there's... His childhood was terrible because good people 
didn't take an active interest in, you know, keeping him from living in this terribly abusive home. And I feel like that, that sort of compassion and empathy for people growing up in that sort of environment is a lot harder to teach, right? Like, that's not something that everybody in Dumbledore's army is going to have or everybody who went to Hogwarts that year is going to have. But Harry Potter has that. And uh, so, yeah, just the, the idea of him being unhappy or unable to connect to his children, uh, you know, in his role as a wizard police officer... The only reason that I, I think that that might be plausible from a storytelling perspective is that he has literally missed his calling in improving the lives of wizard children everywhere and is now, like, stuck in this desk job. Well, I mean, it's not a desk job. He, like, he has a desk. But, like, he's in a job where he's just, re he, he's, he's reacting, you know? Like, if there was a good Ministry of Child Services... Like, would, like, we have all these, like, Tarm Marvolo real guy problems that we have now? I'm not sure that we would. Like, maybe the way to stop the next Voldemort is not to, like, go out there and bash heads as a, as a cop. It's to, like, take care of children who, uh, you know, are gonna be born with ludicrous amounts of power, you know, unknown by most of humanity, and then be, uh, I don't know, raised in environments where they're mistreated and abused. Like, I don't know, just the part of me thinks that maybe that's a, a direction that J.K. Rowling could have, should have, would have gone on this. That's all of it. That's the entire argument. Harry Potter. Could have saved children. Didn't. Big problem. So, this sets this up. We got a window here for a room we haven't built yet. I'm thinking I actually probably want to set up an, a similar window here. And like I said, I don't really, uh, I, I'm eventually probably going to use this space for something or literally anything. Like this might be a logical area to have like as my potions area because it's, it's near the nether and what have you. But my, my biggest, uh, I don't know, kind of goal with all, all of this that I've built out so far was just to try and get this in a place where, if you're coming out of this house, it doesn't look terrible. Of course, it's raining right now, so it's it still looks terrible. It's, oh good, there's an endermite. Go run into some cacti. But that, that just, it feels a little bit more, more natural. I do like this little pond here. I wonder if I could extend, if I cut this, this face more sheerly, I might even be able to have, like, a waterfall or a lava fall that falls into that pond. That actually, okay, I don't, that idea is, is definitely striking me as interesting. Although, I don't know that you'd be able to see it in the distance. But just kind of, like, wiping out this part of the shelf here. Like, at the point where we're not wanting mobs to climb up here anyway, that just, you know, we just get a little bit more sky on the water here. And we could even, like, this this part of the shelf here isn't, like, absolutely necessary. Oh, maybe what I do is I have, like, lava fall straight down from inside of that nether wart. I don't think nether wart can catch on fire. So I could just have, like, a lava block where that pumpkin is right now. And then, uh... Well, let's go ahead and knock that out. Dang it. So many blocks, so little time. I'm going to go ahead and quickly fix this up. Now, I'm realizing that this is slightly inconvenient for me to climb up, but I do carry a lot of ender pearls in general, so this should be fine. So there we go. We've got a little bit of nether rack, nether wart, not nether rack. we got a little bit of nether wart growing here. we got a bad storm that makes it hard to look at, but... I don't know. We'll come back and eventually put in something in these rooms and sort out the Latin a little better. I don't really need this torch anymore, though. That that torch is just sure, surely unnecessary. So there we go. We have slightly improved our balcony. Maybe one more window before we close it out, just because I think having a little bit of symmetry might be okay here. I know that Vintage Beef always rails against symmetry, but, like, these, well, actually, on these two windows, I have those offset, even, 
to avoid any sort of real symmetrical problems. Then I've got like another one kind of over there, I think. Let's go ahead and hop up. No, I don't. Okay, yeah, so I've got these both offset. So this one goes here, and then this one's like over and inset. Huh. So if I was gonna actually have another one, I might even want to inset it somehow. Having having this part of the room in more, which is gonna cut into my wheat farm up here, which I don't love. But anyway, we'll come back to that another day. Oh, hello, skeleton. I don't have any way to kill you. Except this one. Oh, wait. This one. Boom. Take that. See, you don't need to be Harry Potter to fight evil. You just need to show up with a sword. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.